Hello adventurers and welcome back to my channel. Today we're on a very exciting adventure. I have been here a couple of times before but never for the channel. Today we are at the War Eagle Mill. Now the War Eagle Mill is something that as you travel around this area you'll find a little bit of information about here and there. In fact this particular mill served this area proudly for many many years. Now the first recorded mill on this site was actually built in 1830s but washed away in 1848. The Blackburns rebuilt built the mill and it served the War Eagle residents again until the Confederate Army burned it to the ground in 1862 because they did not want the Union to be able to use it. Following the Civil War, they actually rebuilt the mill once again in 1873. It was a grist and sawmill. Area timber was cut and used to construct Fayetteville, including Old Main and the University of Arkansas campus from this location and other towns all the way out into the west. This mill went on to burn in a 1924 fire but in 1973 a family came back to this area and drew inspiration from the earlier versions of the mill and rebuilt the fourth water-powered grist mill in this location. They sold that mill in 2004 to the historic preservationists and since that time it has been here for all of us to visit. Now around the property you'll find various signs that depict what has happened on the property and various aspects of that. You can also tour around various buildings but the really interesting thing is this right here talking about the watershed the actual water that flows through this area. Beginning in the Boston Mountain Mountains, the War Eagle Creek actually flows for about 70 miles and here you can find a map of what that looks like. And something else I thought was pretty cool is the fact that while we were reading through the history the people who actually purchased this property in the more recent years actually also owned the Crescent Hotel in Eureka Springs. So it just goes to show that all of the different places that we go here on the channel end up tying together in some way shape or form. And so I thought that was really cool. Not to mention this is super close to that area so you could actually make a day trip of this if you are staying at the Crescent. Now the mill itself has a nice large parking lot and they also have something inside that we're about to go check out but the property here is very nice no matter what time of year you come. Of course let's just get to the meat and potatoes of this. We're going inside because who doesn't want to go into a historic mill? I do and I also found out that they serve food so um if that's the case we're eating here today guys. Look guys, I found a bunny. Oh, it's so cute. Now something pretty cool when you come inside is they actually do a demonstration of how the mill works and you can talk to the miller but also on the wall up here you can see how the process works. So if you happen to come in and they're not doing that presentation, they do have a visual so you can still see it which I think is super, super cool. In fact, right here they have a 10 step process for how the milling process actually works. And it has some visuals here as well so that you can see them actually doing each of the tasks, which is extra cool because it allows you to kind of understand how each one of these processes actually happens and why it's important. But then again, of course you can come over here and look at the actual items and see how this actual real life working mill is still running today.
Now, as you travel through each one of these walls, the displays that they have here have all things that are actually milled here at the mills. So tons of variety. And you can pick up things that are super, super fresh, which I think is absolutely everything. They have everything here that you could ever possibly want or need. And then they also have a lot of other handcrafted items from this region, which are super, super neat, like soaps and honeys and jams and jellies. And it's making me really hungry in here. But the second floor is where the food is, so let's go up these stairs. Okay guys, I'm up here and I'm gonna get some food and I just saw some things that looked really good so I was like, sign me up for that, yes, yes. And I think, I, I think this is, this is gonna be quite the delightful treat. I'm so excited. Okay, I got the special today which is a potato and bacon soup with some of their signature cornbread and I cannot wait. This just looked so delightful, not to mention these actual plates that they have and also the bowls they have them for sale downstairs so i thought that that was really cool also because it gives you an idea as to what it would be like to have a dining experience with these very very cool now i for one really enjoy a good soup and so whenever i find one on the menu i'm like yes please sign me up let's do that and so whenever i saw the people who were in front of me get this i just looked at it and was like oh yeah that looks really nice and tasty now i did go ahead and add to this a soda so for the special today with the soup the cornbread and the soda it was like 12 dollars which is pretty decently priced considering everything is delicious and delightful and made here at the War Eagle Mill. So I'm really excited about this, but also I came upstairs to sit in this area that has a larger, more expansive space. And there's also a little mini museum up here. So we're gonna check that out after I finish this. Now, the size of the portion itself is pretty nice. This is just your standard soup bowl. It's about three quarters of the way full. And then this cornbread is a pretty big slab of cornbread. And you know, a good cornbread can go a long way for filling your tummy and sticking to those bones. So let's get into it. Whenever I'm going into the soup itself, it appears nice and creamy. It doesn't appear super watery or anything like that. At the same time, sometimes potato soups can be a little bit thick. This one seems to have a, a good texture and consistency to it. So let's find out what it tastes like. I'm really excited about this. I have waited until just after lunch so it wouldn't be super packed here. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. Definitely taste the hardiness of the bacon. It is a nice creamy texture. The potatoes just kind of melt whenever you have them in your mouth, they just kind of disintegrate. I feel like there's some carrots in here. Mm -hmm. Definitely a little bit of carrot, a little bit of onion. Nice overall pepperiness without it being overly peppery. Yeah, we, we like this. Again, a nice size piece of cornbread. My favorite thing to do anytime I get cornbread is tear it in half. Ooh, the crumbly goodness. I'm gonna drop a piece, here we go. Boop. <laughs> The texture of this is very consistent. Squeezing it, it's not super dense. It's kind of light and fluffy. It also doesn't appear to have that, that like overwhelmingly like greasy touch to it. Sometimes it can if they oversaturate it with butter. But um, mm, that is delicious. This is this is really good. Little bit of sweetness. You can taste the mealiness of the cornmeal, but it's not like a paste in your mouth, if that makes sense, because sometimes it can go there. This is really delightful, and I would gladly eat this meal again. I'm gonna get to it, and then I'll catch you guys whenever we look at the museum in a minute. This is, this is good, though. Okay, that was really yummy, guys, and I waited until the dining area cleared out so I could show you what it looks like a little bit better. This place is really cool, and this is on the third floor, so the second floor is where you order the food and get it, then the third floor is where you can come up here and have a lot more space, and then at this end is where the little museum is, so super, super fun. Now, demos are done on the first floor, 
over. So it's kind of just one of these multi-layered kind of attractions, but let's take a look out this window and then we'll go over here and check out some of the museum pieces. Can't really beat a view like this. And I almost sat at this table for our meal today, but the glare was a little bit much for filming. But look at this. In this area, you'll find some of the things that have been used over time. Now the items that you find throughout this room are all things that have had a very interesting past. And you can see that reflected in the intricate details of the ironwork and the rust, which has only been acquired over time after many years of retirement for some of these items. There's some old shoes. There is a beautiful panel of stained glass. It's really cool to come up here and just kind of look around a little bit. Not to mention, again, you do have this lovely seating area that is pretty expansive up here. So I am really enjoying this trip. Oh, look at this, guys. There's actually a War Eagle Cavern also. Hmm, maybe we'll go there one of these days. As you can see, it's pretty neat out here and the views are gorgeous. This is a perfect place to come take some photos or just enjoy a quiet outing. They have all sorts of outdoor seating and they have this really cool bridge behind me that I think you can see is very popular. It's just a one lane bridge, but it's pretty cool. Let's go get a closer look. It has a 10 foot six inch clearance and this is what it looks like. Should we go over it? there's something really interesting about going over a one lane bridge especially one that has such a really interesting history so this is is quite a treat in itself but the actual mill is is definitely something I would suggest this has been so fun but let's go over the bridge right now and I'll give you that last perspective before we wrap everything up right over the bridge there's actually a historic marker here that's so cool and then over there is more of the mill area in fact this area out here is where they have the actual fair here on october 13th through 16th so they have a nice little fairgrounds now that is cool Now, if you have enjoyed coming along with me to the War Eagle Mill here in Arkansas, make sure you leave a thumbs up, hit the subscribe, and consider taking a trip here yourself. No matter what time of year you come, it's beautiful, it's amazing, and it's a learning experience, not to mention they have the tasty treats upstairs. Until next time, guys, bye!